A patellar tendon rupture is a devastating knee injury that usually affects athletes. In this video, I'll explain how the injury occurs and what the surgery and recovery entail. My name is Dr. David Geyer, triple board certified orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine specialist, and anti-aging and regenerative medicine expert. I hope you feel, look, and perform your best regardless of age or injury. Now, patellar tendon ruptures are fairly straightforward. The patella tendon is this tendon below the kneecap that attaches the kneecap to the front of the tibia. And it is a difficult injury. Usually it tears right off the lower or what's called the inferior pole of the patella, right at the top of the patella tendon. It is something that almost always needs surgeries. We're going to talk about. Typically, this is in sports, landing awkwardly from a jump. And, and usually it's in athletes in their 20s to early 30s, maybe up to about age 35, but usually landing awkwardly from a jump, occasionally running, planting your foot, changing directions. It's a non-contact injury, but it's very difficult. It is one that has to have surgery. It does not do well without surgery. Now, you can occasionally see it in your everyday people, too falling down the stairs and things like that. Um, older people tend to get quadriceps tendon ruptures. Younger people tend to get patella tendon ruptures, but typically the treatment is the same. The reason it needs surgery is uh, you have to reattach it to basically get it to heal, but then to also start range of motion. If you're going to try to say, let's put you in a cast and get that to heal. Yes, that, that patella tendon will eventually heal, but the time it takes to do that, your knee would be so stiff that it, you almost create a worse problem because then getting range of motion becomes next to impossible. Plus, you would wonder how strong that repair is. So surgery typically involves passing stitches into the patella tendon to hold it in place. There's a variety of techniques to do that. A lot of times the surgeon will drill holes up through the kneecap and tie the stitches above it. I don't know how you can see that there, but you would drill holes up into the patella and then tie the stitch or stitches, the sutures up above the kneecap. And then for a short period of time, the patient's in a brace or an immobilizer fully out straight. And then over the coming weeks, the surgeon allows more and more motion uh, basically to to the point that that tendon repair has healed, but you try to get the motion back as that tendon is healed. It's a tricky balance because you want to move the motion along fast enough that the patient doesn't get stiff, but you don't want to move so fast that in theory, it messes up the repair. So it's a really tricky thing. The surgery is pretty straightforward, but the recovery is long. It really is. Uh, and it's very hard. A lot of time spent three months or more just getting full range of motion back. And over that period of time, that quad muscle gets really weak. So then there's a lot of time getting that quad strength back. And that is just you know the first step. Then it's doing the sport specific rehab. It's a long process. And so in high level athletes, like college athletes and pro athletes, I often tell them it's nine to 12 months minimum. And it's a surgery that, especially with pro athletes, has a good but not a great return to sports at the same to higher level of play. And so for like an NFL player or an NBA player, that can be a really difficult problem getting back to the level of your competition. And it's really tricky. But again, something that needs surgery for everyday people, it can have a good outcome. Just know that it's surgery and a long process. As far as some of the newer innovative regenerative treatments like peptides, maybe that might help speed the recovery in terms of helping the he uh, the repair to heal and getting the muscle strength quicker. I don't think it's been necessarily studied for that. And as I talk about in other videos, those are experimental treat treatments when you talk about FDA approval and things like that. So that would be something you'd want to talk to your doctor about. I don't know necessarily the research is one of those things that in theory makes sense, but that would be a discussion for another person. But yes, almost always or just always need surgery. And it's a long, long rehab process. Now, I'd love to hear about your experience with your knee injury, so leave those in the comments below. Just understand I can't offer you specific medical advice, but I do try to answer those questions or at least address those topics from the questions in future videos. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, click the bell to be notified when I release a new video, and when I start any live streams like my Ask Dr. Guy or Live shows. If you have a knee injury or knee pain, hip, shoulder, or other joint pain, and you want to get significantly better in the next 30 days without cortisone shots or surgery, you can learn more about working with me in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to helping you feel, look, and perform better than ever.